Welcome YouTubers to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In this video, I'm going to be working out 16 practice test questions that should closely mirror what you should expect to see in the electronics information subtest of both the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB, as well as the pre-screening Internet Delivered Computer Adaptive Test, that is the PICAT. Uh, before I start with these practice test questions, I just quickly want to mention this. Um, I do have a playlist for the electronics information subtest. It has about 65 videos in it, as well as two other full-length practice tests. In my opinion, if you go through this playlist from start to finish, you will be exceptionally well prepared for this subtest of the ASVAB. Finally, I want to say this. Uh, truth be told, the vast majority of you will pass the ASVAB if you study for this test from anywhere for a few days to under a month. And for that reason, I do not recommend that you pay for tutoring or sign up to any online boot camps. Guys, on my channel, I freely cover the ins and outs of everything you need to know. And if, again, if you study that information diligently for less than a month, you should be fine on this test. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with these practice test questions. This first question says, which of the following equations is not an accurate representation of Ohm's law? So Ohm's law says voltage, which is given in terms of volts, is equal to current, that is I, which is given in terms of amps, times resistance, which is R, given in terms of ohms. In case it's not obvious, the symbol for ohms looks like this. All right, so this is Ohm's law. You can see it matches A, so this one is an accurate representation. You can solve Ohm's law uh, to be in terms of current, which looks like that. Uh, and that is answer choice B. So B is a form of Ohm's law, albeit so solved for I or current. Likewise, when you solve for resistance, it says resistance equals voltage over current. That is also Ohm's law. You can see that here. Uh, so D is the correct answer. Uh, it is not an accurate representation of Ohm's law. And you might be saying to yourself, well, how do you get I uh, solved like this? Again, here's Ohm's law, voltage equals current times resistance. If we want to solve for I, we just divide both sides by R. This crosses out, leaving you with I on this side, equals uh, voltage over resistance. So I equals voltage over resistance. All you did is divide both sides by R. All right, so that is that one. You do have to know Ohm's law, as you'll see in just a few minutes. Uh, for this subtest and to answer other questions mathematically within this subtest. Number two says, which of the following is the correct formula to determine electric power in watts? So again, this is one of those formulas that you have to know. Power measured in terms of watts is equal to your current measured in terms of amps times your voltage, which is measured in terms of volts. In other words, uh, the correct formula to determine electric power in watts is A, power equals current times volts. All these other ones are incorrect. So number three here says to measure electrical power, you would use A. So uh, this first picture is an ammeter. And as it happens, this measures amps. As you should know, amps is uh, electrical current. Uh, this second picture here, Again, I told you that the symbol for ohms looks like this. Ohms is always in reference to resistance. This is an ohm meter that measures resistance. Uh, this picture right here is a voltmeter that measures volts. And finally, this picture here is a watt meter that measures watts. Again, to measure electrical power, Electrical power is always going to be in terms of watts. You would use D, a watt meter. Number four here says, which of the following has the least resistance? So as far as resistance and electricity is concerned, things with high resistance means it's hard for the electricity to flow through it. So for example, you should all know that rubber and wood uh, have very high resistance because electricity does not flow through them very easily. That said, metals are have very low resistance and electricity flows through them rather easily. And here's a table of all the resistivity of common metals. 
as you can see, copper has less resistance than iron. So to answer this question, which of the following has the least resistance? Well, copper does. As a matter of fact, most of the electrical lines that go to your home, the main lines are made of either aluminum or copper. The older ones are made of aluminum. The newer ones are made of copper. Number five says, if each resistor in this circuit equals 1,000 ohms, what is the total resistance in the circuit? So first, I want to point out that this is a parallel circuit. Specifically, you can see that we have one resistor here, so I'm going to call that R1. This is our second resistor, so I'm going to call that R2, R3, and R4. And according to the problem, each of these resistors uh, has 1,000 ohms of resistance, so that's 1,000 ohms there. This one is 1,000 ohms as well. This third one is 1,000 ohms as well. And this fourth one is 1,000 ohms as well. So how do we calculate total resistance in a parallel circuit? Well, we use this formula right here. 1 over R of T, R of T is the total resistance, is equal to 1 over R of 1 plus 1 over R of 2 plus 1 over R of 3 plus 1 over R4. And what values do we plug in there? Well, we plug in these values. They're, they all have uh, 1,000 ohms of resistance. So this becomes uh, 1 over 1,000 plus 1 over 1,000 plus 1 over 1,000 plus 1 over 1,000. And again, that's 1 over RT. Um, we're just adding fractions here. And in order to add fractions, they have to have the same or common denominator. All of these have a common denominator of 1,000. Since that's the same, it's not going to change. We're just going to add our numerators. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 4. So 1 over RT equals uh, 4 over 1,000. So we want to know the total resistance. This is 1 over the total resistance. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to do this off to the side very quickly, 1 over RT. We just want RT, right? So what can we do? We can flip-flop this, and in doing so, this becomes RT over 1. Anything divided by 1 is itself, so this is just RT. All right, so RT is going to be, again, we flip-flop this to get RT, and we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to flip-flop it. So it's going to be 1,000 over 4. 100 divided by 4 is 25. 1,000 divided by 4 is going to be 250. So the total resistance in this parallel circuit is going to be A, 250 ohms. And we calculated that using this formula. Number 6 says changing alternating current to direct current is called what? Again, AC is alternating current. DC is direct current. And... Uh, as you can see in this little diagram, we have alternating current going through a transformer to this thing right here, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute, and then it comes out as direct current. Again, if you look at a graph of alternating current, it looks like a sine wave that goes up and down, whereas direct current is just a flat uh, graph like that. This little thing right here is called a bridge rectifier, and so given that this little thing which helps convert AC to DC is called a bridge rectifier. The process of changing AC to DC is called rectification. So this one is C. Number seven says a number 12 gauge wire compared to number six gauge wire is. So here are some common gauges of wire. Here's a 12 gauge wire and here's a six gauge wire. AWG stands for American Wire Gauge. That's the common standard of wire gauges in the U.S. As you can see, uh, the 12 gauge wire is significantly smaller than the 6 gauge wire. So this one is going to be C. It's smaller in diameter. Number eight says if two volts of battery power is used to power a flashlight that draws one amp of current, how much power does the flashlight use? So again, we're going to calculate power to be in terms of watts, so we need the wattage formula. You're not going to have this formula on test days, so you have to know it. Power in terms of watts is always equal to your current in terms of amps times your voltage given in terms of volts. 
So power in terms of watts equals uh, our current in this case is one amp. So I is one and voltage is two volts. Uh, power is one times two R two. So in other words, how much power does the flashlight use? It uses B two watts of power. Number nine here says the following symbol is A. And we're talking about this symbol over here. Uh, for the electronics information subtest of the ASVAB, you do have to look at symbols and know what they are. So if you want, you can Google for common electrical symbols and try to commit the most common ones to memory. That said, uh, the first thing I want to point out is that there's a line going through this rectangle. A resistor does not have the line going through the rectangle, but a fuse does have the line going through the rectangle. So this one is B a fuse. Number 10 says, how many paths of electrical current flow can be found in a series circuit? So for the ASVAB and PiCat, you have to know the difference between a series and a parallel circuit. Uh, here's what a series circuit looks like. Uh, as you can see, it notes that there are, is only one path through which electrons can flow. Whereas in a parallel circuit, there are multiple paths through which electrons can flow. So to answer this one, how many paths of electrical flow can be found in a series circuit? That is only A, one path. Number 11 here says the ground wire is always. So here's the electrical wire color codes. Uh, neutral wires are always going to be white or gray. Hot wires are always going to be black or red. And ground wires are always going to be green, greenish yellow, or just bare copper. So to answer this one, the ground wire is almost always A, green. Number 12 says, silver is a better conductor than copper, but copper is more often used because of. So previously, I showed you uh, this chart of the resistivity of common metals, and you can see that silver has less resistance than copper, which, it, which means it's a better conductor. The question is, why is silver used less often than copper? And it's because silver costs a lot more than copper. I think silver is about 10 or 20 times more than the cost of copper. Number 13 says, if a circuit has a 9-volt battery and a 3-ohm resistor, what is the power output of the battery? So power output is always given in terms of watts. That said, uh, we don't have everything we need to plug into the wattage formula here. We know our volts is 9. But that said, we're given this resistor value of 3 ohms. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Ohm's law to solve this for I, and then we'll plug that into the wattage formula. And as you'll see in just a few seconds here, we'll be able to solve it. So let's solve this for I by dividing both sides by R. This crosses out, leaving you with I on this side. I is equal to voltage over resistance. And if it's helpful, you could write it like this. I is equal to voltage over resistance. So we weren't given I amps to solve this one, but that said, we can substitute voltage over resistance in for I. So this becomes power equals voltage over resistance times voltage. And we have all those things. So now we can solve for power. What is the voltage? It's right here, it's nine. How much resistance is in this uh, circuit? three ohms of resistance times how much voltage? Nine. So power is equal to nine divided by three is three. Nine times three is 27. So there are 27 watts of power output in this circuit that has a nine volt battery and three ohms of resistance. We had to use Ohm's law to solve for our current, which is voltage over resistance. And then we plug that value in for I, and then we were able to solve for wattage. Number 14 says, what is the total current in this circuit? So again, we're going to use Ohm's law, which says voltage given in terms of volts is equal to current given in terms of amps times resistance, which is given in terms of ohms. Uh, in order to solve this one, however, we have to calculate our total resistance, R of T, and since this is a series circuit and not a parallel circuit, we're going to use this formula over here. And this looks intimidating, but what it says is the total resistance 
is going to be the sum of the ohms at each resistor in the circuit. So here's the first resistor. Here's the second resistor. All we have to add those do is add those up to find our total resistance. So our total resistance is 20 plus 40 or 60 ohms of total resistance in this circuit. Again, our voltage is right here. It's 60. So this is 60 equals I. We're going to be solving for I or current times. Again, we just calculated that our total resistance is 60. So to solve for I, we just divide both sides by 60. In doing so, this crosses out, leaving you I over here. 60 divided by 60 is 1. So in other words, there's 1 amp of current in this particular uh, circuit. Number 15 says current can be expressed in. So let's take a look at Ohm's law. Again, Ohm's law, voltage given in terms of volts equals current given in terms of amps times resistance given in terms of ohms. As I've said probably five times in this video already, current's always given in terms of amps. That said, there is another unit measurement for amps, and that is milliamps. As you can see, there are 1,000 milliamps in one amp. That's the same thing as uh, this word over here, milliampers. So this one is C. And finally, number 16 says, which of the following is one of the reasons neighborhoods are connected to the power grid? via electrical substations instead of being wired into long distance power lines directly. And uh, let me just say this, those electrical lines uh, carry alternating current. So let's take a look at this. The substation transforms direct current. No, those power lines are alternating current. Uh, the substation transforms alternating current to direct current. Again, your house uses alternating current, so that's not correct. Um, the substations use special components to connect aluminum power lines to copper household wiring. Not all households use copper wiring. Some of them still use aluminum, so this just isn't correct. Uh, D says, the substation transforms the efficient high voltage power coming off the power lines to safer, lower value for household use. So this one is the correct one. All right, so that is that one. All right, so that is it for this one. As always, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up as well as share it with anyone else who may be preparing uh, for the ASVAB or PICAT. Of course, you're more than welcome to leave feedback in the comments section below. Uh, in my opinion, if you watch uh, all the videos in my playlist on electronics information, uh, you'll be exceptionally well prepared for this subtest of the ASVAB. Uh, so I'd recommend spending about a day doing that. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose.